Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and thanks for joining me. So in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I save money. Now before I get started I just want to point out that some of these tips or ideas may not be for everybody. So some people may disagree with them, some people may dislike them, so just use them however best suits you depending on your circumstances and your preferences. Okay, so I have mentioned all of these tips and ideas in older videos on my channel, but I thought that it would be good to bring them all into one updated video for you, given the current economic climate that we're living in and the increase in prices that we're going through, I'm hoping that this will be helpful for you. Of course, if you do get value out of my video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So let's jump right into it. So as I have mentioned all of these already in previous videos, I'm not going to be going into too much detail about each one today, and I'll link those videos down in the description box for you, so definitely go and check those out if you want more detailed descriptions of my routines and what I do. But I'm going to start in at number one with hair products. So when I started out on my eco journey about three years ago, I really practically cut out all mainstream conventional hair products. We're made to believe through marketing and advertising that we need all of these different potions and lotions but we really really don't and cutting back to basics and just using a very small amount less than a handful of products on my hair has really really helped me save lots of money and then in number two very similar to number one is body and skin products same thing we really don't need the horrendous amount of products that we're told that we believe they're not only bad for the environment but most of them are full of toxic chemicals again cutting back to basics and just using one or two things on my body has also helped me save lots of money. Number three is makeup. So I stopped wearing makeup a couple of years ago and now the only thing that I'll occasionally wear maybe once or twice a year is mascara or lipstick on a special occasion. I occasionally fill my eyebrows in as well but I really would prefer that I didn't have to because I'm very low maintenance. But yeah not wearing makeup anymore obviously this is everybody's personal preference. There's absolutely no judgment from me. Just personally has really helped me to save money. Number four is perfume. Again very similar to kind of the first three. I don't buy perfume anymore. I just use lavender oil, which I dab here and here or also on my wrists or a blend of essentials that have been diluted or an essential oil kind of uh, room pillow spray. So it's like a lavender relaxing one. I use that on my clothes and on my body as well. Number five is dyeing my hair at home. So I am a natural redhead. If you've already watched my previous channels, if you've also seen my Facebook page, you'll know this, but I do put henna on my hair. So I do this myself at home. It just keeps my natural color going because I am getting grays already in my thirties. Um, but yeah, I don't even remember how much it costs to go to a salon. To be honest, I think it could possibly be 10 years since I've been to the hairdressers. So I dye it myself at home. I just do the roots every four weeks or so. It costs me about a pound to do it myself. It's just the raw, pure, 100% organic henna powder. There's no additives in it. It takes quite a while. It, it's kind of a whole day process pretty much, but it's really, really worth it. I get lots of compliments on the color and it matches my natural hair color really, really well. So yeah, this obviously has saved me a fortune. And then number six, very similar to number five, is DIY haircuts. So I recently started cutting my hair at home. I mean, I'm looking in the mirror behind, it's looking a little bit uneven at the moment, but curly hair is very forgiving. And to be honest, I just watched loads of YouTube videos, YouTube tutorials, and I learned to do it myself. Uh, inevitably, this has saved me lots of money as well. So number seven is water consumption. Again, this is something I have mentioned a lot on my channel previously because it's something I'm very passionate about. But recently I started saving the water that runs when you're running the hot tap, for example, to wash the dishes. So I kind of just put a glass under there and then thought, hold on a minute, this is all going down the drain. So I've started filling up my kettle and my jug, basically anywhere where there is running water that can be going to waste, try and find a way to reuse it. So when I'm running the hot water for my washing up bowl, um, I use that initial cold water, if that makes sense, to then fill my kettle up and then boil any vegetables or any cooking that needs doing later or watering the plants. Same with saving your rice or pasta water after you've cooked. Uh, as long as it's unsalted, definitely save that up and then let it cool, obviously, and water your plants with it. If I have a bath, which is only very occasionally because it is quite wasteful, but sometimes for my well-being and relaxing, I really like to do that. Uh, again, I'll save that bath water and I will use a pan and I will use that water to flush the toilet with. This might gross some people out, but it's just 
saving a lot of water and obviously in turn this is cutting down your water bills as well and then similarly to water consumption number eight is energy consumption again i don't leave anything plugged in when it's fully charged when it's not in use anything that has a standby light on it effectively is consuming energy it might not seem like a lot but i don't for example leave lights on if i don't need them or if i leave a room i don't leave appliances plugged in like i said if they've finished charging just mindfully considering every time you're using something every time something is consuming energy just turn it off if it's not in use so number nine is a minimal wardrobe. This might not seem like a way to save money, but it's definitely helped me. So in the last couple of years, I've started to strive to be a minimalist. I'm not quite there yet, but I apply the rule of one in, one out at least. So whenever I bring something new into the home, whether it's secondhand or new, I will always replace something that I already have in the home with it, if not two or three things, if that makes sense. So if I bring a new top into the house, for example, I will remove one or two tops that I already own and I'll either donate these to charity or I'll sell them on Facebook Marketplace or eBay. Also sticking to a small minimal amount of colours. So I only have a handful of colours in my wardrobe. I don't have prints or floral patterns or bright colours anymore. This is just my personal preference and I have made a video all about this in the past where I did a kind of capsule wardrobe tour. I'll link that video up here or here um, where basically this has helped me to cut down the amount of clothes that I have which in turn means I don't need to buy as much and yeah obviously this saves me money. So I'm going to join number 10 and 11 in together and that is cooking from scratch and bulk meal prep. So this is something that has saved me a huge amount of money so reducing the amount of takeaways, the amount of meals that I have out, cooking from scratch really saves a lot of money and also bulk cooking as well so big batches of for example chilies or curries they make a good five portions and then I'll for example put them in Tupperware pots in the fridge and my partner usually has them for his work lunches so obviously that saves a lot of money during the week but yeah cooking from scratch if you have the time and you enjoy cooking is definitely something personally that saved me lots of money. So number 12 is choosing free activities or time outdoors versus paying for experiences. So yeah, pretty self-explanatory. If you have access to nice places outdoors that you can walk in or even if it's just a trip to the park, anything involving nature and being outdoors and fresh air, whether it's socialising with other people or whether it's time for yourself on your own and you're going for a nice walk in the forest, for example, any time outdoors that's free is obviously a really good way to save money instead of paying to go to, I don't know, a leisure centre or for an activity day out that costs you loads of money. So number 13 is another one that I've been doing more and more recently now that the weather has improved finally a bit in the UK and that is to use public transport or walk instead of using the car. So I do still own a car and I do rely on it occasionally and it's important for my independence. It's not something that I'm going to be getting rid of anytime soon. But yeah, if I have the option to use the train or the bus and it's convenient or I can walk somewhere, then I'll always choose that instead of the car. So number 14 is a big favourite of mine and that is natural cleaning products and natural laundry products. I've got lots of videos on my channel all about how I do this but I basically make my own cleaning spray from just two ingredients and I also use very basic ingredients for laundry and they're both actually quite interchangeable and versatile so yeah this has saved me a ton of money not buying conventional mainstream cleaning products in supermarkets anymore. So number 15 is subscriptions and direct debits. Now what I mean by this is basically just monitoring what is actually going out of your account. So if you have a subscription to something that you've forgotten about and you don't really use, or you notice a direct debit that goes out of your account every month, that you think, well, is this really necessary? Or yeah, again, had I forgotten about this, then just kind of monitor that. Look at what you really, really need. If, for example, you have a magazine subscription or a, a TV channel subscription or whatever it might be that you just don't really get a lot of use out, maybe just ask yourself, do you really need that to keep coming out of your account? And doing this has definitely saved me a lot of money and also helped me to reevaluate what's really important. So number 16 is a huge one and I probably should have put it at the beginning of this video, although it wasn't in order of preference, but that is buying reduced price food. So if you've checked out my Facebook page, Red Curl Vegan, you'll know that I am a huge fan of making 100% reduced price meals. Most of my shopping is reduced price. So basically the reduced section or the reduced aisle in your supermarket is the food that is going out of date that day and they will 
will put a reduced usually yellow label on it uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the food most of the time and if I'm completely honest some of it lasts for several days afterwards it's definitely a good way to not only reduce food waste but obviously save money you aren't buying things full price um, I have to admit that probably on average 80% of my shopping is reduced price it's difficult to average because obviously sometimes there's dry goods and cupboard things that aren't reduced price but yeah I can't tell you how much money it's saved and it's not only super satisfying because you kind of just make do with what's there and you find a way to make a meal out of it um, but it's yeah really really cut down my food bills so number 17 is reusable products now this hasn't directly saved me money this is more of a long-term investment and a long-term way to save money but by cutting out disposables so things like disposable razors disposable makeup wipes disposable single-use sanitary products and things like that by buying the reusable washable versions of these uh, in the long term has definitely saved me lots of money and of course you know it's a lot more sustainable as well in at number 18 is repurposing so this means repurposing jars containers food wrap paper for wrapping presents in cling film mailing bags anything that basically you can repurpose that makes its way into your home always try to find another use for it if you can so i've talked about this one loads in i'm just going to give one example about the film the plastic film that comes around mushroom punnets often i've made a video all about this how i repurpose it as a food wrap or a cling film uh, and this has obviously saved me loads of money and again it's very sustainable it is going to end up in landfill at some point but i always think that if you can give something a second or third use or a, or another home or a yeah another use then it's definitely going to save you money in the long run because you're not having to buy something new to fulfill that purpose. So number 19 is less of a tip or a hack, but just more kind of a, a rule that I've chosen to live by. And that is low waste, minimal living. So being more low waste and living with less, including using refill shops, uh, and much like I just said, using repurposed containers and things, which I then take to the refill shop. I actually work in a zero waste shop, so I'm very, very lucky uh, in that respect. But yeah, just generally living a less wasteful life and a less consumerist life life and kind of cutting back on the things that I purchase and the things that I need and just kind of trying to make use of what I already have um, has definitely saved me lots of money as well. So number 20 is secondhand furniture. Now when me and my partner moved into this house six months ago I virtually kitted the entire house out with used furniture and this was I will admit definitely a first for me so as a Virgo I did like everything matching and as a child I didn't have a lot so when I got my first home many many years ago by myself I wanted everything to be new and I've kind of realized over the past couple of years that that was incredibly unsustainable but you know we're all on a journey so yeah definitely buying secondhand furniture everything in our lounge virtually is secondhand I haven't done a home tour yet but I would like to get around to that at some point um, our sofa was free for example uh, picking things up off of Facebook market place saved us hundreds of pounds 21 very similar to the last one is secondhand clothing exactly the same thing facebook marketplace ebay it's very very rare nowadays that i'll buy something new and if i do it's because it's high quality and i know that i'm going to look after it for many many years i mean i still have items in my wardrobe now i'm looking at them from about 10 years ago and they weren't from good quality brands and I still own them because I look after my stuff but yeah recently if I do absolutely need to buy a new item of clothing or new uh, it's always secondhand or pre-loved if I can. 22 is home decor. Now I used to be a bit obsessed with ornaments and going to kind of furnishing shops and decorating my house with random trinkets and little boxes that I found and mini Buddhas and things that I really really didn't need and it's taken me several years to kind of break that habit and move away from that so now I just decorate my home for example with plants which whilst you do still have to buy them they are functional because they're healthy they purify the air and they also look really beautiful and they're natural as well and then the other thing that I'll do is for example if I go for a walk or I go to the beach and I pick up a beautiful shell or a nice looking stone or anything like that anything also that's been repurposed I'll use that to decorate my home instead of spending money on home decor so number 23 is a pretty big one and that is going 
doing plant-based. So coming up to almost two years ago now, I went vegan. I started vegetarian and then fully transitioned to vegan almost two years ago. And my initial reason for doing this was for financial reasons. So I just basically stopped buying meat in my weekly shops and then I just gradually cut everything out. And so now I'm fully vegan. But this has definitely saved me a ton of money. This misconception that being vegan is expensive is completely untrue. It's really saved me uh, a load of money on my food bills. Obviously, it's much better for the environment, inevitably better for the animals and also better for my own health as well. But yeah, going plant pay, blah, blah, going plant based <laughs> has definitely saved me lots of money. So number 24 is not necessarily an instantaneous money saving hack, but in the long term, it definitely will. And that is to unsubscribe from marketing emails and to not go window shopping. So since I stopped randomly walking around town and looking in shop windows for things that I didn't actually need and also unsubscribing from all the marketing emails that I used to get 10% off this 20% off this oh we have an offer it ends at midnight as soon as I unsubscribe from all that and realize that unless I actually essentially need something then I don't need to be encouraged by all of this marketing I just stopped spending money I just stopped buying things that weren't necessary I stopped being drawn into that consumerist kind of world that we live in at the moment so yeah by unsubscribing from your marketing emails and trying to avoid window shopping if that's possible for you will definitely help you to save money in the long run and finally last but not least number 25 is to just purchase mindfully so again this isn't a direct instantaneous money saving hack but in the long run this has definitely helped to kind of change my mindset about what's really necessary. So whenever I go shopping or I see something that's for sale, whether it's online or in a physical shop, I always ask myself first, do I really need this? Is it really necessary? Is this really going to change my life? Or is there something in my home that I have already that I could use instead? And changing my mindset like this has really, really helped to cut down on my spending. And obviously it's reprioritized my money elsewhere so it's enabled me to be able to spend money on more important things like my well-being like therapeutic massages occasionally and going to yoga when you're living on a budget it's really difficult to reprioritize if you're kind of caught up in the consumerist society that we live in so by kind of applying that rule of thumb to always ask yourself before you buy anything is it really necessary uh, i believe is truly one of the best ways to save money so there we have it. I hope that you did find this video useful. Apologies if it went on a little bit longer than intended, but nonetheless, I hope that it was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments section down below if there's anything else you'd like to know or if there's any tips of your own that you want to share with me and other viewers. I'd love to hear from you. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you haven't already. Your support really, really means the world to me as a small content creator. In the meantime, take care and stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.